Okay, so I'm gonna put a bilge pump in this 97 Sea-Doo. Uh, that's the pump down there. It's not connected yet. I've just ran the hose up here to test fit it. There's the fitting here. That's gonna go through the hole right here where I've already started cutting a hole using a Forstner bit, which makes a nice clean cut. And then I'm gonna run these lines directly to the battery with two lines going up to a switch right here that's going to go right there. Waterproof switch. Uh, I like this one because it just requires a little small hole so I don't have to put a big square hole in the ski for a rocker switch. And then while I'm in here, I'm also going to take out this line. That's an unnecessary battery vent tube that's not needed. So I'm just gonna pull that out. I'm gonna take these bilge uh, pickups here. Those are, I'm gonna leave those in there. I'm not removing those. So this bilge is just gonna be, electric bilge is just gonna be a emergency thing that I hope I rarely use. But I'm gonna leave these in here because they do a pretty good job. The only thing is the engine has to be running. And so this electric bilge is just in cases where um, I can't start the engine, which I had that happen to me a couple of weeks ago, flipping the ski and uh, filling the hole full of water, and I had no way to, to get it out because the engine wouldn't start. Um, I actually had lost the key is what had happened. So that's why I'm putting in the bilge pump, but I'm going to take these out, and you can actually see they just slide out of the bottom. If you flip them over, sometimes they get this gunk in the in the bottom mostly that's from oil and water mixing like that but these need to be uh, periodically cleaned out to make sure they're not plugged but i'll move those out of the way so that i can get down here and work on this here's that uh battery vent tube it comes all the way up here right here so i'm just going to go in here and see if i can Pull that off like that, done. Get that out of the way. Got the hole drilled. Gonna put this through here, put the nut on the back. I use the the little uh, storage compartment there to catch any, any uh, shavings and things that came out of the drill just to keep it clean. So then I'll put this tube on. I'm probably gonna zip tie that on. It fits pretty tight and it's not holding much pressure. Um, if that doesn't work, I can always use a screw tie, but for now I'm just going to use a zip tie. And then I'm going to start working on the wiring on the pump at the bottom. I'm not actually going to mount that in because this, this tubing happens to be pretty stiff. You can't really tell on the video, but it's hard to bend. It's just flexible enough where I can coil it back over behind the, the tube and up underneath here. Um, but it's rigid enough that it's holding that pump in place. And so it's, you know, it's in there pretty stable. So I'm not going to bother with trying to mount it down or anything like that. Took the pump out uh, just temporarily so I can put the connector on the ends of these wires. And uh, before I do that, these are waterproof disconnects. I'm going to give it a little dry run. I've never put those type of connectors together before so I'm going to do a little practice run on it first before I do. Now I need to get my wiring sorted out so I've got some 14 gauge uh, stranded wire there and I've got a quick disconnect, waterproof disconnect so I can put that close to the bilge and take the bilge pump itself out if I need to and then I've got a waterproof inline fuse holder, which I'm going to put a five amp ordinary car fuse in there. And then for the connections here, and also uh, a connection for the battery, I'll be using these heat shrink connectors, crimpers, and then a, a heat gun to tighten those up. So I'm going to test all this out here, especially these little guys. I've never done these before, uh, but I want to make sure I know how to put those together pretty well, and then I'll, I'll do it for real on the ski. That went pretty well. On this one, I made a mistake. 
those yellow boots should actually be on the inside of that plastic. But on this one, I did it the right way, which is why I like to do these one time when it's new before I do it on the real one. So if I put them together, clip them, pulling it pretty hard there, it's not coming apart. So I'm pretty happy with that. And then this was the heat shrink coupler. I just hit it with a heat gun for about 40 or 50 seconds all the way around till it melted. And uh, you know, it's pretty solid right now. You can, you can feel it, you can tell it's not coming apart. So that's pretty good. So the next thing we'll do is repeat all this on the actual ski and pump itself. Okay, so now that's on. So I'm gonna put this back down in here and I'm gonna go ahead and connect up the tubes and then I'll start running the wiring for to the battery and drill a hole up here for the switch. Okay, so at this point, got the pump in, uh, I've got the wires cinched down, tubes cinched down, <clears throat> and the connectors right there waiting on me to finish the wiring. And that connector is actually going to go behind that exhaust tube up against the hull. I just have it there for convenience so that I know where it is. So now I'm going to drill a hole here and for this one I don't have a Forstner bit that size and the angle of where I want it going to use this spade bit. You have to be a little more careful with it because they uh, they don't make as nice clean a hole, but uh, that's what we're going to use. There's actually two layers here. There's this layer and about an inch and a half down, there's another layer. So I've got to go through both of those. So that actually went pretty smooth and created a nice clean hole through both layers. Um, now I wish I had my shop back to suck away all these shavings, but I'll clean that up. And uh, I'm not even going to push the switch in there to test fit it because it once it goes in it's hard to get back out um, intentionally that way so um, I already know that this hole is exactly the right size because I did a test fitting with the drill before so um, that's done so now I'll run the wiring through that hole and through to the back got all that cleaned up and then uh, this is going to go right in there like that So I ran the two 14 gauge lead wires. 16 gauge would probably work. This wire is probably a little bit too big for this, but it's fine. And I was lucky enough to be able to run it into the existing wiring harness sleeve there, which had plenty of room. So I just slipped them through and uh, there they are. So one of those is gonna go to the battery and one is gonna go to this, which is the other side of this switch here. I just have to be careful that I line up the positive and negatives. Okay, so now we're gonna melt these heat shrink couplers down here. You know, I needed that one to connect to the inline fuse and on the other side of the inline fuse, uh, that'll go to the positive side of the battery. And this one goes to the negative and then over here, got these two for the switch. Those go onto the little flat terminals on the bottom of the switch. Put some zip ties on these to keep them together, to keep everything buttoned up and out of the way. So I'll take my heat gun here and I'm gonna melt those. These are all melted down now ready to go as well as these so now we'll just put it all together put a fuse in it and see if it works okay it's all back together time for a test this is what it looked like in the end there's the new pump in the middle there and you can see I've got the existing siphon pickups are in place. I'll continue to use those. They work just fine. There's my disconnect. If I need to take the pump out, replace it or whatever, 
and then my inline fuse right here and then of course the battery terminal connectors and then the switch which we're going to turn on right now and away we go so it looks like it's working pretty good i'm pretty happy with it you can do the same thing hope this helps and i uh, will catch you next time